Greetings. Hello there. Painting two students. Delighted that you could make it for another week of skeleton tuition. Yes, once you can actually master the skeleton, nothing else you draw or paint will be so daunting. The skeleton is so intricate and has so many different twists and turns that whatever your eyes look at again will seem not so difficult. So it's a good training. All artists do it. I did it for, it seemed like, years in the different art schools. And uh, I wasn't the greatest skeleton drawer, but, you know, I have some plenty of drawings of them and I managed. And you can too. I've already received two drawings from last week's exercise and uh, they're good enough, you know, they're it's difficult to do the rib cage. You'll be happy that this week is the pelvis, maybe not, but it's simpler than the rib cage, which is the good news. Uh, just before I start, you know I've been experimenting with different pencil sharpeners. I know some of you are just going to want to work without paint this semester, and that's okay. You can work with pastels or coloured pencils or whatever medium that you like. You know, if you want to do watercolour, you can do watercolour. If you want to do um, something different, you can do something different. You can try oils if you want to try that. It's entirely up to you. However, if you do want to go with the stuff that I've managed to um, assemble for the class, Blick Art Shop in Harlem have art boxes which contain two canvases, a palette, blister pack of I think 12 brushes and another brush, a smaller brush separate with a tight point and uh, of course paint. I think that's everything that's in it. Anyway it's about $120 worth of uh, materials and it's costing you $42. And it's in Blake Harlem which is uh, I think it's right beside the Apollo Theatre. So if you get lost, where's the Apollo Theatre? National landmark. Anyway, I'm practicing with some sharpeners. This thing arrived a few days ago and I've just opened it today. Uh, in fact, on an earlier video for the other class, I was literally just opening it and hadn't a clue how to use it, to be honest. So it's a tiny thing. Uh, the name is obviously Foreigns. <laughs> It's called the hovel, presumably in uh, Danish or whatever it is. It's pronounced hovel. Hovel? Sounds better than hovel. Hovel. So the hovel is a uh, miniature plane like you'd use for sanding wood. And I have a great lot of trouble with pencils. The softer the pencil, you know, pencils are going from hard to soft. So the harder pencils, the lead is really hard. I mean, you could use it to stab vampires. And the softer lead, of course, is good for drawing because it creates a nice dark and you can do a lot of effects with it, but the lead is softer, so it's easy to break. And, you know, I use sometimes these knives and you have, to, you have to watch yourself, you know, because you end up, sometimes you can end up breaking bit by bit by bit. I also, I usually carry this one around with me. It's a French um, everyday knife and that I used for sharpening. I wouldn't take this out in the subway or anything unless you want real trouble. So, <laughs> so take it when you're alone in the countryside. And uh, sometimes this is a nice sharpener. It's got three points that you can sharpen it to and actually it's quite a good sharpener this and it wasn't too expensive. <coughs> I think since the lockdown I've been buying innumerable things just because of the tedium and uh, one of the things I bought was this container sharpener thing and it, it is good. The materials are steel, opens up nice but you know, in actual fact, you know, once you get down to it, mind you, I did pay a lot less than you should. I got it for like a third of the normal price, so it wasn't too bad. 
But once you get down to it, what's inside it is just, you know, an everyday ordinary sharpener. So it's kind of like a, uh, a sheep in wolf's clothing, if that makes sense. A triumph of style over substance. But it's a nice one. You could carry that around with you. And, uh, and there you go. Sharpened. With no mess. Anyway, this thing claims to be the world's greatest sharpener, so it's tricky though. I mean, I'm not sure how to hold it, so I think you just. <laughs> oh god. That was the wrong way. Ah, here we are. I see how it goes. So you just. Yeah. I think it'll take a bit of getting used to it. Uh... Okay, enough of that. Sharpening pencils, everything you want to know about it and more. So, we're going to look at the pelvis and I'm going to put a little, oh God. I'm going to put a little thing up as well where there's a kind of computer drawing of the pelvis being done. But here it is on Fritz. And you see that? There it is. So, pelvis, one, two. So it's more or less dead centre of the body, of course. As you know, all human beings come in different shapes and sizes, so there'll be somebody with much longer legs. But it's roughly half, half. The reason I say this is it's the same with the face. A lot of people end up with drawings that are massively out of proportion, you know, and they think it's okay. They end up with a tiny rib cage, huge legs, elongated, you know, things that really could not exist, even in a, even in a, Ripley's, believe it or not, museum. You know, you don't see uh, skeletons like that. So, um, you know, bear in mind the proportions. You've got the head, one, two, three. So the whole shoulder to shoulder is three heads in width. And you'll remember going down the body, there's eight heads in length. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to the top. And if you can try and keep a general sense of proportion when you're doing the drawing, it'll at least look like a human being. So there it is in the centre. And uh, in the um, schematic I'm going to send you as well. I'll probably have to send it by text, actually. It's going to just give the rough of it. But, um, you know, if I'm looking at it... I'm just seeing it, you know, it's like a heart shape. Going in and out. And of course, it's got concave bits which hold the, um, the sockets for the bones there, you know, the, uh, the hip sockets. So what I do, I'm going to show you this in a second, I get a generalised shape of it. And there for it. Like a kind of giant butterfly in a way. This professor always does everything live on camera. Nothing is <laughs> you know, um, 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 processed and pre-manufactured. It's live every week. Who knows what'll happen? Hopefully not a disaster. Just 
two bits at the bottom that join here together. You should have that on your photographs that I sent you. Yeah, you know, like you don't need to kill yourself doing these weekly exercises. You know, I know some of you are really stressing it out. Just do as best as you can. Uh, you know, I'm not expecting things that I can, uh, you know, blow up and put on a wall of a medical school. Um, just express yourself, you know, but try and keep it in proportion. That's all we're asking. I've spent about three minutes on this. When I hold the pencil, I'm holding it not straight down like that, I'm holding it sideways. You know, it gives you more scope to do things, and it's quite a soft pencil. I think this is a uh, 6B. So if you're using pencils, try and buy more than one pencil. I mean, you can get pencils. They're not that expensive. I mean, they're like, God, I don't know how much they are now, like 70 cents each or something like that for good ones, maybe less, maybe more. But they're not that expensive. just leaving something there for the future sockets of the legs but you know it doesn't have to be oh, that shape I'm saying is like a butterfly and then it goes in and then there's a smaller butterfly and there's two holes here you know where you can see there it goes through it's supposed to be the holes and then you've got up here into the crutch kind of area this business here, the sacrum kind of bone here, and we've got the bottom of the spine. You'll remember from last week I was describing when we did the rib cage going in and out and sticking. Okay, so you're getting the impression. It doesn't have to be a work of genius. I've spent a few minutes there. You've got the whole week. We're going to, once we're complete with the skeleton, hopefully you'll be able to do some sort of work that develops on from that. Perhaps has some sense of figuration or something. But really, you know, I'm going to give you much more freedom after we complete this. So have the exercise sent to me by email to the college or by text to my mobile phone. And please have it sent by one week from today, which would be the 29th of September. And that would be lovely. That would be next Tuesday. So... Hopefully you get that all done. Um, I'm glad to say that my book on albinus, on anatomy, has arrived. So I'm going to be able to consult with you in that. There is a section here 
which has got the pelvis and thigh. So you can look at that and use that to help you with the drawing. Albinus, I, I, I like his work. I mean, it's very refined. And uh, I had to buy another copy because my copy is now locked up in the college. It may as well be locked up in Fort Knox because you can't get into the place. It's COVID sealed. So there we are. So I'll leave that with you just now. Pelvis drawing for next week. I think you have a photograph of it from Fritz. If you don't have that, you're welcome to look at this or there's plenty of photographs on Google Images. So until that time of next week, I bid you adieu and thank you for being my students here in Painting 2, VPA 122.